Welcome everybody. It's Monday night. Whoop, whoop. It's Monday night and we're doing Awakening Soul Force Live here in the Awakening Soul Force group on Facebook. I'm your host, Jefe Bambreguesa. <laughs> and I'm really looking forward to facilitating a healing meditation for you tonight. My hands smell really good. Uh, I've got some, uh, some custom-made essential oil by Rebecca, who's in the group. I have some custom-made essential oil called Presence, and it smells really good. And I, uh, I put it on there to kind of give me a little boost before I popped on. Hey, Aaron, how's it going? Aaron, let us know how your uh, marathon went this weekend. I know you missed the nonviolence group so that you could go run around in nature, which I do not blame you at all for choosing a run in the beautiful uh, nature of the Oregon mountains as opposed to coming and talking to a bunch of us about nonviolence. Because, yeah, I get it. What's up, Tab? Welcome. Ana Margarita. Como estas? Anna's my mom. <laughs> Welcome everybody to Waking Soul Force Live. It's Monday night. Tonight we're going to do a, a healing meditation together. Um, we're going to do a little healing meditation to some of the uh, one of the tracks from the Awakening Soul Force album, which you can pick up uh, on iTunes or Google Play, Spotify. You can stream it and listen to it. But uh, a really good compliment. Some of them are me actually guiding, doing the guided meditation like we'll do tonight, and some of them are just the music as composed by Iran Garcia, uh, who is the very talented music composer who did the custom meditation tracks for the Awakening Soul Force tracks. Speaking of Awakening Soul Force, if you've not had an opportunity to pick up the book, I would highly recommend it. Uh, every once in a while, I remember that I wrote a book called Awakening Soul Force and that it exists and that you can pick it up. Uh, we talked a little bit about it last week when we were talking about chakras. A lot of people ask me questions about chakras, both online and offline, in messages and emails. And uh, I always have been, I've been referring people to the book because there's a pretty extensive sec section on the chakras. And I highly recommend doing the deep dive into that, especially when it comes to healing, working with the intuitive senses, getting familiar with the chakras and tuning them up really is a good idea. Hi, Angie. She says she loves oils. Welcome. Very cool. Aaron says, I'm good. I ran a half marathon and got lost. <laughs> So, I ended, so it ended up being 15 miles. Wow. You got to put a GPS tracker on you or something? What's going on? We have to do a, like a life alert or something for Aaron so she doesn't get lost in the forest. Let me know if you relied on your intuition to get back to where you started. If you use your internal GPS, your, your, your God positioning system. <laughs> hey folks, and I don't want to share a little bit of good news. Who would ever thought that perhaps llamas, llama, that's right, you heard it here, Llamas might be the savior of humankind when it comes to COVID. I caught this story on the good news. Uh, the title was, uh, Potential Drug Candidate Emerges as Llama Antibodies Found to Neutralize COVID-19's Spike Protein. Crazy, right? I don't know if this is a better uh, indication of how we are all connected, but if we're relying on llamas to save us from this global pandemic, we gotta start showing our animals a little love, you know? So this is what the, the article says. Two nanobodies, small, stable immune, immune cells similar to various antibodies and derived from llamas. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny. Um, have been found in tests to neutralize COVID-19 by blocking its interaction with the human receptor that, binds, that it binds to. The nanobodies block the attachment of the COVID-19 spike protein by targeting a region of the protein immediately adjacent to and slightly overlapping the region of the cell where COVID-19 binds and enters. Both llama antibodies or nanobodies were shown to neutralize the live COVID-19 and showed particularly high potency and increased neutralization potential when combined with a human antibody. These findings were published in the Nature in nature structural and molecular biology paper kind of wild it looks like they go into a little bit more detail the research was funded by the rosalind franklin institute a medical research center supported by the united kingdom government which has filed the patent on the nanobodies kind of interesting so a little good news there's some headway being made in the scientific community regarding the coronavirus and i just thought it was really funny that the, the nanobodies were coming from llamas and I made a joke about it earlier because uh, my sister used to do this thing when she was younger. She used this thing called the llama dance. And if I could even replicate it, I would do it for you guys. But it's so 
so silly, uh, and I can't. <laughs> but my sister used this like little dance where she would like scoot her feet and her hips in front of her and like bob her head, and we called it the llama dance. And so I sent her a text message this morning. I said, hey, who would have known that Christy's llama dance was really kind of a shamanic calling in of medical healing for COVID-19? That was pretty silly. Tab says, are they Obama llamas? You know, uh, it's funny that you rhyme those two words. I wrote a script back in the day when I was writing, um, when I was writing some, uh, some sketch scripts. I did a whole sketch about um, uh, calling in calling into Obamacare and Ob it was like an Obama impersonator calling into Obamacare trying to get his stuff fi figured out and it was just a, it was a silly, it was a silly thing. So one of the jokes was um, he calls in and, and it asks for his name and he says, President Barack Obama. And then the automated system goes, a hesitant walking llama, is that correct? So that was a little, that's funny that Tab made that joke because I don't know, back in the day I wrote a joke about Barack Obama and llamas. <laughs> Aaron says, I will Venmo you cash if you attempt the dance. <laughs> hey, that's a, that's, that's a fair deal. Unfortunately, this shot's too tight for it. Otherwise, I will. Maybe we'll do a little post later on Instagram. All right, everybody. Oh, it looks like my um, microphone, it's funny. I turned around the mic so I could see the battery power on it. And it was started at two bars. And now just a couple minutes in, it's showing me it's down to one bar. So I'm trying to decide if we just try to get into this meditation and heal, or if I'm at risk of running out of, uh... Tab says, I'll pay you not to dance. That's okay, now we've got a bidding war. <laughs> Do I hear 100 for the dance? 100 for the dance, 200, 200 for not the dance. Here we go. All right, just because the, uh, the receiver is looking like I'm on one bar and it's giving me a little warning, I'm gonna go ahead and let's get into the meditation for tonight. So for tonight's meditation, we're gonna do a, a healing meditation. And what I wanted to talk about in regards to the healing meditation is um, when I talk about a healing med meditation and how we're gonna move forward with tonight's uh, process, a healing meditation is essentially an opportunity for us to get quiet, to get connected to our higher self and to connect to uh, God source energy, to universal, compassionate, loving awareness. and welcome in that vibration and energy and hold space for our healing. So we talked a little bit about last week, just on kind of a massive like collective consciousness scale, what we're doing here and how we can really hold space for the new story of humanity to emerge. Um, what we do in our healing meditations for ourselves is very similar, except what we're going to do is hold the space for the potential for healing, whether it's emotional, it could be physical as well. I've been working on my knees because I was definitely feeling like I was feeling like I was starting to get arthritis in my knees and my knees have been hurting for months and months and months. So I started to change my workout routines, my stretching routine, and I've also now done some, uh, a couple times a week I'm doing Reiki on my knees where I'm actually putting my hands on my knees and I am uh, visualizing bringing in healing energy into this area, but I'm also visualizing clearing out any of the junk and I'm visualizing the repair of the tissue. So what we're gonna do tonight is we're gonna do a healing meditation where uh, we get centered, we get connected. And the first half we're gonna do a clearing. So we're gonna get rid of any junk that might be in, let's say the chakra that you wanna work with or the physical part of your body that you wanna heal. We're gonna clear it and then we're gonna repair it. So that's what tonight's meditation is, is basically gonna be. So before we get into it, I want you to just pick something in your mind. Uh, you can refer back to the chakras last week. Um, and you can pick an emotional or energetic healing in one of the chakras either the sacral chakra, excuse me, the root chakra at the base, the sacral chakra, the solar plexus, the heart, the throat, the third eye, and the crown. Pick any of those centers to heal and focus on tonight, whatever comes up for you. Or you could actually pick, uh, it could be an entire body, like an energetic cleanse for your entire body, or you can pick a physical ailment. So you could have like shoulder pain, you could have knee problems, ankle problems, or something like that. And you can pick that to focus on, and I'll give you a little guidance and direction on how to do that. So wherever you are now, Actually, I really don't want the microphone and the sound to go out in the middle of this. So I'm going to change out. Take, 
take two minutes, folks. I'm going to replace the batteries in the, in, the, uh, in the transmitter so that we don't lose audio in the middle of this, since it always takes it a minute for this thing to show me when the audio, uh, or how the battery power is going. So uh, give me 90 seconds and we'll be back with the meditation. So get nice and comfy wherever you are and we will pause for just a moment. All right, we're back and it looks like the mic is back. It's funny because this is one of those moments this is one of those moments where your intuition tells you something and you're like, oh no, eh, it'll probably be fine. And then halfway through the meditation is when the mic goes out and I'm like, damn it, I should have listened. Because as I was setting up tonight, I said, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, spin, the, I'm gonna spin the thing around so I can actually see the, uh, the battery levels on the microphone. Because usually it faces the camera person, but because the camera person is also in front of the camera, I had to switch it around. And so the fact that I already did that tonight and then it showed me that it's running out of battery, I would really, it makes sense for me to listen to my instincts on this and just fix it. So there we go. Microphone problems solved. Both the receiver and transmitter, three bars. Now we're ready to rock and roll. So I hope you had an opportunity to go ahead and just get comfortable wherever you're at as we prep for this uh, healing meditation. I'm gonna switch the meditation track here in just a moment. This is the rhythmic breathing track. This is one of my favorite tracks on the whole album. Iran did such a great job. All right, folks, wherever you are now, go ahead and settle in, close your eyes. And the first thing I want you to do is go ahead and take a big deep breath in through your nose. Exhale out of your mouth. And we're gonna go ahead and do three big energy clearing breaths here as we settle in and kind of bring ourselves to energy neutral. So take a big deep breath in, imagining white light washing over you from head to toe, big deep breath in. Exhale, release. Another one, big deep breath in. Exhale, release. One more time, filling yourself up with bright and beautiful, vibrant light from head to toe. Inhale. Exhale, release, and just feel any kind of worry or anxiety just wash away from you as you settle into the here and now. You're gonna focus on your breathing for the next minute or so. Just become conscious of your breath, become conscious of your breathing. at the base of your spine and on your next inhale I want you to breathe in deep and imagine a big ball of white light springs from the tip of your tailbone inhale roll that ball of white light up your lower back up your spine all the way up between your shoulder blades all the way to the crown of your head I feel this bright and beautiful light sort of dance and sparkle atop the crown of your head and feel that light really start to expand as you breathe deeply from the crown of your head and expands outward surrounding you in a bright and beautiful golden white light that radiates from the crown of your head and all around you. As we create a safe and sacred space for tonight's healing meditation, Make sure to take another big deep breath in, inhale. Exhale, release and roll your awareness down from the crown of your head, down the back of your neck, down between your shoulder blades, all the way down your back until you reach, your awareness reaches the base of your spine. Again, you're gonna take a big deep breath in. Imagine fusing this awareness, this ball of light with the base of your spine. Exhale, release and drop a grounding cord like a long white energetic extension of your spinal cord as it descends down into the earth. 
piercing the top of the ground, going deep into the crust of the earth and channeling down until you feel yourself anchored to the here and now, connected to the gravitational pull of the earth. And this is your grounding cord, and this is where we're gonna release any of that yucky stuff, anything that feels muddy, sticky, anything negative, uh, any negative energy, pain. It's actually gonna be released through this grounding cord and absorbed by the earth. So now I want you to bring to your awareness any aspect of your body or yourself that is in need of healing tonight. You can focus on a chakra center, root, sacral, solar plexus, heart chakra, throat, third eye, or crown. Or you can feel a, f a physical part of your body that's in need of healing. For me, it's my knees. So now I want you to turn your awareness to whatever part of your body you want to bring healing into. And we're just going to breathe for the next 30 seconds. Just really focusing your attention on this area. with how this center feels, whether it's a chakra or it's a part of your body, and just kind of lean into how it feels right now. Now we're gonna enter a cleansing process, and this process is essentially gonna look like you taking a big deep breath in and filling your body with white light and when you exhale and release, you're gonna imagine wherever needs healing, you're gonna imagine like muddy, yucky energy being sucked out the grounding cord and into the earth. So we're gonna clear now for the next couple minutes as you breathe in, you inhale positive white light, exhale, release, and suck out any nasty stuff down through the grounding cord to be absorbed and transmuted by the earth. So let's go ahead and engage in that clearing process for the next couple minutes. Here we go, big deep breath in. Exhale, release. And go ahead and just continue this cycle in your own time, in your own way. more rounds of breathing here really breathing in bright and beautiful vibrant white light into whichever area needs healing and every time you exhale you feel anything that no longer serves you being being pulled down that grounding cord to be absorbed transmuted and transformed by mother earth let's do a few more big deep clearing breaths
go two more big deep clearing breaths, big deep breath in. Exhale, release. One more time, big deep breath in. Exhale, release. Good, and now we're gonna shift our attention and set the intention to begin to repair. Now we're gonna repair, so we worked on clearing out first, now we're gonna enter into a repair process. So now as we shift gears here, we ask God, we ask loving awareness, spirit, universal loving vibration to bring in healing and renewal for our highest good, to bring in the, the blueprint, the template, the inspiration to recharge the energy center or to revitalize the part of our body that is in need of healing. So as we shift our awareness to that aspect, for example, as I go and work with my knees and what I've cleared out, I'm going to imagine what it feels like for the joints to be flowing in a fluid motion, to be moving, to be running, jumping without pain. I'm just gonna visualize in my mind's eye, I'm also gonna feel it in my body as if I was actually able to move and do the things that I want to do without any pain, without any tension in those joints. So if you're working with physical pain, I want you to go ahead and do the same thing. Just imagine and visualize and feel with your energetic body what it's like to repair and like that you're already there. You're holding that space for the end result. It's already happened and that's what we're really calling in right now as we enter this reconstruction process. And if you're working with energy, you're going to continue to work with uh, the color light that the chakra needs. So if you're working in the sacral chakra, bring in red light. If you're working, excuse me, the root chakra, you're bringing in red light. The sacral chakra is orange. Solar plexus, we're bringing in yellow light. Heart chakra is green. Throat chakra is turquoise blue. Third eye is indigo or violet. And then the crown chakra is either violet or white light. So as you work in the chakra center, call in the energy and the inspiration for where you are when you're actually fully healed and whole. We're calling in that dimension and aspect of ourself into being right here and now, as it already has taken place and we're just choosing that outcome in the future. So this could be stepping into feelings of empowerment. If we're working with the, the solar plexus, it could be open to pleasure and joy if we're working in the sacral chakra it could be feeling grounded and stable if we're working in the root it could be feeling a great sense of compassion and love both giving and receiving in our heart center it could be having a strong voice and articulating yourself clearly through your throat it could be having spiritual vision and insight that you've been calling in and, and need to guide your intuition so go ahead now and focus just on that positive result for the next couple minutes. We breathe. focus as if the outcome has already happened you're choosing it in the here and now you can ask loving awareness you can ask God and spirit for support in this effort for inspiration
ago. We're going to take three big, deep energy clearing breaths as we reset ourselves, integrate and welcome in that healing vibration that we just opened to. Take a big, deep breath in. Exhale, release, letting go of anything that no longer serves you, really feeling that potential to heal and to fully become whole again as it anchors into your body, into your cells, into your DNA, into your energetic system. Take a big, deep breath in, welcoming in that positive vibration. Exhale, release, integrating that sense of wholeness that we are healed into our entire body. One last time, big deep breath in. Exhale and release. Good, go ahead and give thanks for this opportunity to connect. Give thanks for this opportunity to heal. And most importantly, give thanks for this opportunity to be alive and breathing. Go ahead and wiggle your toes. Go ahead and roll out your shoulders. Wiggle your fingers. As you slowly come back to and become aware of the present here and now. And whenever you're ready, go ahead and open your eyes. Very good. So there you have it, folks. A little energy healing practice that we just went through getting into a quiet, safe, and sacred place, and then engaging in the process of clearing out anything that no longer serves us, any junk, any debris, energetically, physically, for a few minutes, and then shifting over into welcoming in the, the potential for realizing the healing that we want to claim for ourselves. Um, you know, what's interesting about this I was 18 years old and playing football at Santa Barbara City College. And this practice was very much already on my radar uh, because I started meditating at 14. You know, my family was very open. So we were working with tarot cards and, you know, dabbling with automatic writing and working with guides and, uh, and, and hands on healing and stuff like that. And I remember tearing up my ankle pretty good in a, in a game excuse me, at practice. So it was an ankle that I had hurt before, but at practice, you know, kind of everyday normal practice stuff, but somebody dove in my leg for some reason, which you don't do at practice, uh, especially when, I mean, I was a starter, so you don't usually dive at the starting running back or any starter's legs at practice. <laughs> and, uh, and somebody just square landed on my ankle while it was kind of back and fully extended, rolled it. I couldn't walk for like two days. Totally ballooned up, super swollen. And over the course of those two days, I, could not, I couldn't even walk. I was actually on crutches for a couple days. I didn't practice the last couple days of the week. I didn't participate in any of the drills or anything on the Thursday and uh, Friday leading up to the game on Saturday. But what I did relentlessly <laughs> in the time that I could was I did an energy, pract uh, energy healing practice very similar to this. And uh, lo and behold, come Saturday, I woke up with crutches next to my bed and I decided to stand up and see if I could do it. And sure enough, I was, I was walking. And not only did I walk, but I played in the game that weekend and had a really good game. And I did, you know, wrap and care for and nurtured the ankle for the rest of the season. But somehow I made it. Somehow it, 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 something about it, I think, worked. And that's why I became sold on this practice of energy healing and working with your own, your own energy to to heal. Uh, it's much more powerful when we have a regular practice and it's much more powerful when we do it on a maintenance basis. We don't do it just when we're in need, which I think tends to happen. <laughs> we tend to get into a sticky situation. And we're like, oh my God, I need healing now. Um, but it definitely helps when we engage in a regular kind of checking in with our body and, and working in this way. It gets stronger the more we work with it. So 
it, I don't know if yeah, I don't know if you can say that it's a replacement for uh, medical interventions. I would say not because I ended up having to have surgery on the ankle a year later uh, after it got hurt again. But uh, just an interesting little story about that practice that we just went through tonight was something that when I was 18 years old, I engaged in that practice uh, real hard because I really wanted to keep playing and it actually, it actually worked. So um, something to think about. Talk about holding space for, for little miracles to happen. Uh, yeah, I've seen it. And she says, have you tried yoga for your knees? I have uh, started doing more stretching and I just started doing some more yoga, Angie. So yeah, I think it's, I think it's a lot of it's to do with stretching. I also went, I began again, talking about being a football player. I went real hard training wise. You know, I played up into my sophomore year of college and afterwards I trained for years, still really hard as if I was still gonna like play, uh, play, in a, play, you know, play in a game or something. And eventually I was like, you know, I don't think I need to keep doing this. But I think I, I think I wore a little bit of, I think I've worn the tread on the tires a little bit. So the stretching has really helped. Trying to, you know, remove foods that cause inflammation is very helpful as well. I've been trying different movements and stuff. And, um, and also I've just been really been engaging the last couple of weeks, uh, every couple of days, like every other day I'm doing an energy session on the knees. And I, I I'm definitely, I'm feeling a difference. So am I doing all the right things in a way? Yeah, I'm tackling it with my nutrition. I'm tackling it with stretching and exercise, but I'm also doing the energy side of it and it's feeling significantly better the last couple weeks. So what's the magic, what's the magic bullet? I don't know. I think it's a combination of all of it, you know, but I think it's a really important thing for us to get in the habit of, of really holding space for ourselves for healing, you know, to be able to regenerate rejuvenate aspects of ourself, not only emotionally and mentally and intellectually and spiritually, but physically too. There's really something to it. You know, I think there's even been studies done for people who have a positive outlook when they're fighting, um, when they're fighting uh, illness and stuff like that. They found that people who just have a positive outlook and meditation, even meditating can be helpful for recovering from, from surgeries and disease and all kinds of stuff like that. So there's a link somewhere in there and I'm willing to try all of it to make it work, you know. What foods are good for healing you? Deanna, that is a very, uh, that's a big question because it kind of depends on what, what you're, what's going on. There is a great book. It is not in here. Rebecca might know. I have a book. It's a nutritional healing book. And uh, I've, I've used that as a reference. I can't remember who the author is. Maybe Rebecca can help with that. She says it's amazing your parents supported growth in that way. Yeah, they are so awesome. They are amazing. I'm very lucky. It's their fault Awakening Soul Force exists. <laughs> Aaron Lee, Tiger Bomb helps for sure. I use it on my joints. Yeah, especially you as a runner, Aaron, as an athlete, it probably would be good for you to do some like energy healing on a weekly basis, and especially in your joints because running is such a repetitive thing. It can take its toll. Uh, what, what foods are good for healing for you? Well, anytime you are dealing with stuff related to inflammation, for example, I was suspecting, you know, it's not diagnosed by the doctor or anything, but I just, the symptoms that I was feeling in my knees and in my movements felt a lot like arthritis. I've had issues in the past with um, what they call jumper's knee, which is when you have a, a really tight IT, IT band and your knee, your patella tracks funny when the muscles are activating or if you flex the knee joint and it's basically like the kneecap sits on, the kneecap sits on top of a little, little pocket and so if it's loose, or excuse me, if it's over tight, it kind of slides and tracks when you bend your knee and so it starts to grind. That's something I, I was dealing with for a long time. Um, and that required a lot of stretching and that required a lot of uh, foam rolling and stuff like that. But anytime you're dealing with inflammation, like I was feeling, I thought my knees were feeling a little arthritic, uh, re reducing your sugar intake is a huge part of that. Um, uh, sugar is highly inflammatory. Um, and when you start to get rid of sugars, especially the unnecessary simple sugars, Simple carbohydrates, that can be a big help, not only for uh, staying lean and mean, but it's really good for your joints and stuff as well. <clears throat> a prescription for natural healing. I think that's what it is too. Yeah, look it up. It's a really good book and it literally has stuff for like everything. Uh, it's a really, again, it's a really good supplement. You know, I'm very much, a, I, I did personal training for like 10 years and I'm very much into the holistic approach. Uh, I will try anything under the sun, um, 
all 360 degrees of what we are as a human being to make wellness a thing, <laughs> to make it happen. So tackling it from an emotional level, energetic, uh, spiritual, and at the level of food because it was uh, Hipp Hippocrates that said, let food be thy medicine. So um, yeah, there's a lot of goodness there. And I'm learning a lot too from Rebecca about that because she's really into it. Mary says, I really needed this. Thank you so much for walking us through this meditation, for sharing your own experiences. Absolutely, Mary, you're welcome. Uh, Deanna says, thank you. I'm all about what you put in your body it has consequence, good and bad. Absolutely, it does. Absolutely. There's definitely a connection between what we consume energetically and what uh, and how our body kind of performs. So, so you have it, guys. There's a, there's a little healing meditation you can engage in anytime, anywhere, when you've got something that flares up or acts up. And a real easy way to remember it is to really ground yourself, to, to set that grounding cord so you have a place to send the junk that you're clearing out energetically. And then um, clear and repair. Clear it and repair it. So we'll, we'll imagine and get rid of, you know, we'll kind of energetically release the stuff that is, that is uh, binding us up or is, is causing us to feel unwell. And then we're gonna bring in something new that really empowers us again to really claim our healing as if it already happened. You know, that's been coming through a lot in a lot of my meditations, not only as it relates to physical healing and transformation, but even in, in terms of consciousness and some of the social change that we're seeing. I touched on it last week a little bit, but there is an element of holding space for the potential that we claim and step into. You know, it's like every movie starts with an idea, right? Every TV show, every great invention is a thought first. And so this process of going from imagination to reality isn't, isn't all that foreign to us. That's exactly what drives human evolution forward. And there's something there. There is a connection between what we dream up and what inspires us and what we can see and visualize in our, in our mind, what we can feel in our bodies, what we can energetically kind of create for ourselves. There's sort of a, an energetic blueprint that we can tap into that can help aid us in our healing, that help aid us in our growth. And, you know, we've got all kinds of lessons to learn from the stuff that we experience in our life, whether it's a physical thing or emotional. And when we've learned those lessons, that's when, you know, that's when we are able to kind of heal from them and move on in a lot of ways. And sometimes not, sometimes they do get the best of us or they stick with us for a long time. But sometimes there's a larger spiritual lesson in that as well. And who knows? That's up to, to what contract we've made and what we're here to experience and what our ultimate growth is. So, all right, folks, I'm gonna sign off. Thank you so much for joining tonight's healing meditation. I hope that you got a lot out of it. Please feel free anytime you want to repeat that, that healing meditation whenever it feels necessary for you. It's a great practice to welcome into your uh, meditation practice. And uh, it's just, a, just incorporating it as a tool in your, in your self-care toolbox. Two thumbs up from this guy. Uh, I don't know who imagined that llamas were gonna save humanity from COVID. We don't know if that's true yet, it's possible. But uh, I think we should throw a big parade for llamas if they save the world from COVID. We should do a big parade in the streets with llamas dressed as all kinds of saviors and religious figures and all kinds of stuff. It might be kind of cool, I don't know. Maybe the llamas will be the next, the next big thing, llamaism. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. Have a great night. I'll catch you tomorrow. We're doing Tarot Tuesday, and we're bringing through more messages for the week. So I hope you enjoy those, and uh, I will see you then. Have a great night. Adios.